So the United States public is facing an increased risk of economic problems as the crisis just continues to surge across the country. So stimulus checks for the elderly have become a necessary next step to help the American people right now. Since the start of 2022, Congress has been lobbied by the Senior Citizens League for another one-time Social Security stimulus payment of $1,400. This has been prompted by the, by the current uncertainty in the United States following the increase in a crisis. Social Security has a surplus in the trust fund of $2.76 trillion. A surplus of $2.76 trillion and can pay out benefits to every eligible American for the next 19 years. The payment would essentially act as a fourth stimulus check, folks. In the, in the 2022, COLA has increased the highest amount in four decades, pushing many seniors into a higher tax bracket. Therefore, the stimulus check is expected to help offset the additional cost. Over 95,000 people have signed a petition from the Senior Citizens League about this $1,400 check for Social Security beneficiaries. So pressure is definitely growing. Prices across the country are rising at an astronomy an astronomical level, with the Bureau of Labor Statistics even reporting that since October 2020, consumers are paying on average 2% more across the market. Some things like food are up by 5.3%, where energy costs are even up by more than 30%. I strongly support this idea of Congress sending out more stimulus checks, especially a fourth round. Opposed by every Republican in the Congress, as well as the drug companies, the insurance companies, fossil fuel industry and the billionaire class. They want to maintain the status quo and allow the very rich to get richer. It is also being opposed by two members of the Democratic caucus. Dozens of congressional lawmakers, including 56 representatives and 21 senators and over 150 economists, have pushed Biden to support recurring stimulus checks this year. The group included a broad range of Democrats from moderates to progressives like Warren and even Booker. The Biden administration has signaled in recent months that they would like to give more financial aid out to the people in need. That's why lawmakers like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are moving forward in towards advancing advancing Biden's agenda. Representative Omar introduced a piece of legislation that would establish a federal universal basic income system. Under the proposed five-year pilot program, U.S. adults earning under 75 grand will receive $1,200 a month and $600 for each dependent child. The bill has drawn support from lawmakers including Representative Cory Bush, Dwight Evans, Dwight Evans, and Jamal Bowman, and even Pramila J. Powell. Representative Omar wrote in a statement that these payments will help keep people out of poverty, but they also act as an economic stimulus by increasing spending and supporting jobs. Now is the time for boldness. The lawmakers didn't specify how large and frequent the payments would be. In a separate Democratic effort in January, led by Representative Elon Omar of Minnesota, with more than 50 House members, also pushed for recurring payments for this duration of the crisis. In a tweet, Omar specified that the administration should approve $2,000 monthly payments until the crisis ends. More than 150 economists, including Jason Furman, supported the idea of recurring checks in an open letter this year. They wrote that regular lasting direct stimulus checks will boost consumer spending during economic recovery and shorten, and shorten the length of the recession. It is clear that more stimulus relief needs to be passed as the crisis just continues to get worse. Folks, tell me in the comments down below, do you think that President Biden is doing all that it takes to send out the fourth stimulus check? On USICA, the American Competes Act, in the first year under President Biden and the Senate Democratic majority, America saw its strongest economic growth in decades, including increases in uh, wages. Very, very important to the American people who have not seen enough of that over the last two decades. And this week, Congress is taking a major step to build on that success by advancing legislation that will help lower costs, relieve U.S. supply chains, and bring manufacturing back to the United States. Over the next two days, the House will debate and vote to pass a companion bill to the Senate's U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, which we approved last summer, of course, with strong bipartisan support. I'm pleased the House is taking this important step. I've been pushing for months for progress on this legislation, 
to strengthen supply chains and boost our technological competitiveness. Senators from both sides of the aisle want to see a competition and technology bill finally enacted. After this week, we will hopefully be one step closer to achieving that goal. Americans are demanding bold solutions to help lower the cost of living, and businesses from coast to coast need help to relieve supply chains strained by the pandemic. Legislation along the lines of USICA is just what the doctor ordered. It would provide the long-term help our country needs to lower costs and help businesses grow right here at home. Jobs here in America, not overseas. One of the best examples of why this bill is needed is our nation's dangerous chip shortage. The shortage has sent shockwaves across the economy, hamstringing the production of everything from cars, cell phones, refrigerators, medical devices, equipment used by our military. It has increased the costs of all of those items, and American families are paying for those costs. USICA would help relieve them and make sure these supply chain bottlenecks are relieved. Our proposal would provide $52 billion to help relieve those supply chain pressures and bring production back to America, instead of relying on other countries for our chips. Let's bring these jobs back home. This morning, the Banking Committee is examining three of President Biden's nominees to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. The Fed is one of the most consequential institutions in America. Its decisions have massive ramifications for our citizens and for the world economy. At the same time, since its independence is paramount, the Fed's structure insulates the governors from short-term influence and political pressure. When an institution this important is this independent, the guardrails that confine its power are extremely important. Now, Congress has given the Fed a statutory mandate that is really very clear and very limited. The Fed's dual mandate is maximizing employment and stabilizing prices. That's it. That's what the Fed exists to do. The Fed is meant to serve as our central bank. It's not meant to act as an unelected super legislature that dabbles in broader economic policy making should it strike their fancy. <clears throat> its current leader, Chairman Powell, understands this keenly. But, unfortunately, President Biden... Typically, it's America that provides the research, the R&D, and cut...